The story begins with a question that has quietly echoed across three continents. Who exactly is standing behind the global rise of Maxwell Chikumbutso's self-powered car technology? For years, the Zimbabwean inventor's innovations have sparked debates, disbelief, and intense curiosity. From early prototypes that ran without traditional fuel to entire demonstrations of energy generation without external input, Chikumbutso's work has been described as both revolutionary and controversial. Yet behind the headlines and viral videos lies a quieter story of strategic collaboration. A web of interests stretching from Beijing to Dubai and from Harare to Cairo appears to be shaping the next chapter of his technological expansion. And while the media has often portrayed Chikumbutso as a lone genius, recent developments suggest a far more coordinated effort. Over the past two years, several African, Chinese, and Middle Eastern entities have been quietly aligning resources, funding, and policy support around what they believe could be the next generation of clean mobility. The alliance, though never formally declared, is visible through patterns, in trade data, diplomatic visits, and industrial investments. Each clue, when placed together, reveals an unfolding strategy aimed at reshaping not just Africa's transport sector but also the global energy economy. Maxwell Chikumbutso's invention, known for its self-charging mechanism, challenges one of the most entrenched industrial models, dependence on external energy sources. Instead of plugging into a power grid or relying on a combustion engine, the system uses proprietary electromagnetic conversion to generate continuous power. If such a system works at scale, it could rewrite the economics of transportation, making vehicles independent of gas stations, power lines, and centralized control. That possibility alone has caught the attention of global powers eager to secure technological advantage in a post-oil era. China's role in this story begins not in Harare, but in its own industrial zones. Over the last decade, China has aggressively invested in Africa's energy and mobility infrastructure, from roads and ports to battery plants and EV assembly lines. Chinese corporations have also been among the first to recognize that Africa's energy transition may not follow the same path as Europe or America. While Western markets prioritize incremental EV adoption, Africa faces unique challenges, unstable grids, low electrification, and high fuel import costs. A self-powered vehicle system could, in theory, bypass those limitations entirely. That understanding has positioned China as both a partner and a strategic investor in emerging African technologies. According to trade filings and project briefs from 2023 and 2024, several Chinese firms have entered early-stage collaborations with African research centers exploring alternative propulsion systems. Although Chikambutso's exact patents remain closely held, some observers point to overlapping activity between his technology and research financed through China-Africa development funds. The Middle East, meanwhile, brings another dimension to this alliance, capital and geopolitical reach. In 2024, reports surfaced of Middle Eastern sovereign wealth funds engaging with African innovation hubs to diversify away from oil-dependent economies. Their goal, to back breakthrough technologies that could define a post-hydrocarbon age. Among those, energy-independent vehicles stand out as particularly symbolic. Investing in a technology that runs without oil is not only a financial move, it's a statement of transformation. Dubai and Riyadh, both eager to lead in futuristic industries, have expanded their outreach to African innovators under new TechBridge and Energy Frontier initiatives. Within these programs, Maxwell Chikumbutso's name has appeared more than once in policy discussions and pilot project drafts. While no government has officially confirmed a partnership, the pattern of visits, memoranda, and funding flows indicates growing interest. It seems the Middle East wants to ensure that when the fossil fuel chapter closes, its influence remains intact through technological ownership. Africa, on the other hand, sees an opportunity for industrial sovereignty. For decades, the continent has been largely a consumer in global tech ecosystems, importing finished products rather than exporting innovation. But with Chikambutso's work and other emerging clean tech projects, African policymakers are beginning to envision a new role as creators, not just adopters. 
In this vision, African cities become centers of self-sustaining mobility powered by homegrown technology. That narrative resonates strongly with China's Belt and Road Initiative, which aims to build integrated infrastructure linking Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. When China invests in electric bus networks or charging facilities in African cities, it also positions itself to benefit from local innovations. If Maxwell's self-powered cars prove commercially viable, they could be integrated into these existing logistical frameworks with minimal resistance. China's manufacturing capacity, Africa's innovation, and the Middle East's financial backing form a near-perfect triangular model of technological globalization. In such an arrangement, Africa provides the intellectual property and testing ground. China provides industrial scaling, supply chain expertise, and production capability. The Middle East injects liquidity, political clout, and access to emerging markets. Together, these three regions could challenge Western dominance in the clean mobility industry, which has so far been defined by Tesla, Toyota, and European automakers. The idea of a non-Western energy alliance, centered around Chikambutso's invention sounds speculative, yet it aligns with broader shifts in global power. In the wake of economic realignments after 2020, nations in the global south have increasingly sought technological independence. Energy autonomy has become both a practical necessity and a strategic goal. When Maxwell's prototypes demonstrated self-sustaining propulsion, it sparked intense interest not only among engineers but also among policymakers who saw geopolitical potential. A car that needs no external power source could radically alter the balance of trade in energy-dependent economies. Imagine fleets of buses, delivery vans, and rural transports operating without imported fuel or grid infrastructure. The cost savings, environmental benefits, and strategic leverage would be enormous. And so, what began as a small inventor's vision is gradually morphing into a multi-regional economic agenda. One visible indicator of this trend is the expansion of joint research centers across Africa. Several new facilities in Kenya, Nigeria, and South Africa have received funding from cross-continental consortia involving Chinese and Gulf investors. Although their official mandates include clean energy innovation, insiders acknowledge that self-charging vehicle systems are among their research priorities. These centers serve as bridges, connecting local scientists with international engineers and investors. Through them, Africa is not only testing ideas but also developing capacity to manufacture and scale them. In 2025, reports surfaced that a pilot production line was being planned under a joint African-Chinese framework, likely in one of the continent's new special economic zones. While the details remain confidential, it suggests that industrial readiness is already underway. The technology itself remains controversial. Critics argue that perpetual or self-generating systems violate known physical principles and therefore require extraordinary proof. Supporters counter that Chikambutso's prototypes demonstrate real-world functionality, regardless of theoretical explanation. What makes this debate more complex is the convergence of scientific skepticism and geopolitical ambition. For China and the Middle East, the goal may not be to validate every claim immediately, but to secure early influence in case the technology matures. For Africa, it's about ownership, ensuring that the continent benefits first from what could be its most significant innovation since mobile money. As the world transitions to renewable and decentralized systems, such ownership could translate into long-term industrial strength. Economists tracking this alliance note that it mirrors earlier patterns from the telecommunications revolution. When Africa leapfrogged traditional landline infrastructure through mobile technology, it reshaped the communications landscape. A similar leap could now happen in the energy sector. If self-powered vehicles succeed, Africa could bypass both the fossil fuel and lithium-based transitional phases that dominate current Western planning. This would not only save billions in infrastructure investment but also redefine how sustainable development is pursued. The implications extend far beyond mobility. Self-powered systems could eventually integrate into homes, factories, and national grids. In that scenario, the partnership among China, Africa, and the Middle East evolves into something larger, a new technological block centered around autonomous energy. Already, 
Trade analysts have begun referring to this network informally as the Energy Independence Corridor. Its underlying philosophy is simple. Nations should not have to rely on foreign energy suppliers to sustain economic growth. That philosophy resonates strongly with Africa's youth-driven innovation ecosystem. Across Lagos, Nairobi, and Harare, young engineers are experimenting with off-grid technologies inspired by Chikambutso's ideas. These grassroots movements are increasingly supported by state programs funded by China and Middle Eastern backers. In return, those backers gain early access to intellectual property, test data, and local partnerships. It's a mutually beneficial dynamic that accelerates both innovation and influence. Meanwhile, Western observers have watched cautiously, uncertain whether to dismiss or engage. Some companies, particularly in Europe, are beginning to explore collaboration instead of competition. Their logic is pragmatic. If the technology works, global markets will demand it regardless of origin. By positioning themselves early, they hope to secure distribution or co-branding rights. But others view the alliance with suspicion, interpreting it as a geopolitical maneuver designed to reduce Western control over global energy flows. Indeed, if vehicles can generate their own power, the entire oil-to-electricity value chain becomes obsolete. Countries that have long relied on energy exports could see diminished leverage. This is why the Middle East's proactive participation is so strategic. It turns potential disruption into opportunity. By investing in post-oil innovations now, Gulf states aim to remain central players in whatever energy future emerges. They are not abandoning their legacy industries but rather hedging against their decline. Africa, conversely, seeks to escape dependency entirely. For too long, energy scarcity has constrained industrial growth across the continent. Self-powered technology promises not just mobility but liberation from structural limitations. If a farmer in Ghana or an entrepreneur in Zambia can run a vehicle or machine without fuel or grid power, productivity multiplies. That possibility explains why governments are quietly creating frameworks to attract joint investments under energy autonomy banners. Even multilateral organizations are beginning to take note. Recent discussions at the African Union's Economic Forum included references to indigenous energy innovation clusters, supported by Asian and Arab partners. This reflects a broader recognition that Africa's next economic revolution may not come from traditional sectors like mining or agriculture, but from technology that redefines resource dependency. For Maxwell Chikambutso himself, the path has been both inspiring and turbulent. He has faced skepticism, regulatory barriers, and moments of intense media scrutiny. Yet despite the challenges, his ideas continue to gain momentum across global policy circles. Part of this success comes from how his narrative aligns with larger regional ambitions. Africa wants self-reliance. China wants market expansion. The Middle East wants post-oil relevance. Each sees in Chikambutso's work a reflection of its own strategic goals. Together, they have the resources, markets, and motivation to move his technology from prototype to production. But questions remain. Can the system truly deliver the efficiency and scalability required for mass adoption? Will it withstand global scrutiny once independent testing becomes public? And perhaps most importantly, will this alliance remain balanced, ensuring that Africa retains ownership of its intellectual breakthroughs? These questions will define the coming decade of innovation politics. Already, signals of cautious optimism are emerging. In 2025, multiple African governments began drafting regulatory frameworks for autonomous energy vehicles. This terminology, though broad, hints at the institutional preparation for self-powered systems. China's industrial parks in Ethiopia and Tanzania are reportedly evaluating feasibility for localized manufacturing of such vehicles under licensing agreements. Meanwhile, Gulf-based venture funds have earmarked over $1 billion in green tech investments targeted at Africa's alternative energy startups. Though not all funds will go to Chikambutso-related ventures, his influence is undeniable. He has become a symbol of the idea that African innovation can lead global transformation. In the long term, this alliance, spanning China, Africa, and the Middle East, 
may redefine how technology ecosystems are built. Instead of the north-to-south transfer of innovation, it introduces a south-to-south paradigm rooted in cooperation rather than dependency. Each participant gains something crucial, for China, industrial contracts, for Africa, technological empowerment, for the Middle East, investment diversification. But the true test will come when production begins at scale and public trials reveal performance under real-world conditions. If the technology succeeds, it could accelerate a global shift toward decentralized power systems. If it fails, it will serve as a cautionary tale about ambition outpacing science. Either way, the collaboration itself represents a milestone, proof that global innovation is no longer confined to traditional centers of power. The quiet coordination among African inventors, Chinese engineers, and Middle Eastern financiers reflects a maturing world order. It shows that the pursuit of progress is now multipolar, shaped by shared needs rather than singular dominance. For millions across Africa, the vision of energy independence is no longer just theoretical. In pilot towns and innovation districts, prototypes of self-powered vehicles are already being tested for delivery, transport, and municipal services. Early feedback suggests remarkable efficiency in controlled environments. While independent verification is still ongoing, local enthusiasm continues to grow. Every successful test adds legitimacy to the broader collaboration, and every investor meeting signals that the world is watching closely. The convergence of Chinese industrial know-how, Middle Eastern finance, and African ingenuity could become one of the most significant technological narratives of the 21st century. It represents not just a product, but a principle that innovation can emerge from anywhere and reshape everywhere. In that sense, the alliance behind Maxwell Chikambutso's self-powered cars is more than an economic arrangement. It is a symbol of global transformation, where ideas transcend borders and energy becomes truly democratic. Whether or not the technology fulfills all its promises, its impact is already being felt, in how nations imagine their future and in how they choose to cooperate. And so, the question is no longer whether this alliance exists, but what it will build next. Because in the quiet collaboration of China, Africa, and the Middle East, the blueprint for a new energy order may already be taking shape.